1968, Leslie Uggams won a Tony Award for her performance in Hallelujah Baby in a role that was originally written for Lena Horne. And then several years later, she won two Emmy Awards, one for a show called Fantasy on ABC and another for the trailblazing miniseries Roots. But you have to go back a little bit further than that to find out Leslie Uggams' true origins in show business, and that can be summed up in two words. Uh, Leslie, I'm gonna I'm gonna say two words to you, and I want to get your instant response. Ready, Mitch Miller? Uh, my career. <laughs> I mean, he started it all. Even though I had done a lot of things right. as a kid, but he made me a household name. And in in doing so, though, he really went out on a limb. Sacrificed because um, the South didn't want the show because of me. And the they didn't like your voice. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. I mean. <laughs> Right, it was like attempt to adjust your set, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. something wrong with the color here. You right, know? you know, they didn't have black and whites down there, they just had white sets, right? Right, right, okay. right <laughs> in the South at that time, absolutely. Right. And Mitch had tried to sell this show for like four years and nobody wanted to buy it. So the fact that we got on the air was a fluke to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once the show settled in, um, the sponsors were saying, well, you know, the South won't accept the show and we want to sell our products. And, and so uh, first they said to him, um, well, can she, you just then, if you, she has to be on the show as a regular, put her in her own spot. That way, like they used to do years ago with Lena, right. they could cut me out. He said, no, 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 we're not doing that. Uh, he says, this is a family show and we all work together. They said, oh, okay. Well, then, can the sing-along men not, not touch her? And he said, I'll repeat it again. He said, let me tell you, if there's no Leslie, there's no show. And of course, we were a smash hit, and then they uh, put it on themselves. You know, it's, it's hard to believe that, that in that day and age, in, in this era, that there would still be that rampant um, uh, problem. Well, you with know what's ironic about it, David, was the fact that my, all of my most wonderful fan mail came from the South. Really? <laughs> that was what was so like blew me away was that, that I, my dearest, dearest fans when, in letters came from the South. They got hate mail, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't anything compared to uh, the wonderful mail that we, we got from the, uh, from the South. Now, earlier this year, I mean, I mean, you have held Mitch Miller in such high esteem that earlier this year, the Congress of Racial Equality presented him with a lifetime, you presented him yes. with the Lifetime oh, Achievement Award. That was such a thrill. And uh, I was happy for many reasons. And one of the reasons is that people don't realize he put his show on the line for me. Mm -hmm. And I felt that people should know that. And uh, this was a chance for them to really get to know it. And the audience that night, they were just like blown away when they heard the story. And when Mitch got up to make his speech, <laughs> he was so cute, he said, he said, listen, she sang great. What was I, crazy? <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, he minimalized it, but I will never forget him for that. And he's what, 85 and, yep. and still? Yep. And he looks wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And uh, it's so funny, he's bald up here with the hair still here and he carries the bag. <laughs> Very hip looking. He's, he's amazing. You, you keep in touch, in touch with him, obviously. Oh, yeah. We see each other quite a, quite a lot. And uh, uh, recently, my daughter made her debut. And I wish he was out of town. He wasn't able to uh, make her debut. But if I'm working in New York, he always comes to see me. Now, your daughter made her debut doing what? Singing. Okay. Yes, my baby. And she's wonderful. Your baby is how old? She's 25. <laughs> cough, oh, cough, cough. Pardon me. I don't know how she got to be that old. Really, but, and that was such a, a young mother. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll, so you what? You started when you were 10? Yeah, or what? Absolutely. Okay, okay. You know. Right. But um, she's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now, did you try and d discourage her at all when she was younger from getting in? You got into the business. You were born in the trunk. I was born in the trunk. Yeah. I really was. And um, when my kids both started saying that they wanted to be involved in show business, I, I gulped and I said, I want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or something, you know, something that you don't have to worry about people picking on you. Because I said, if you're serious and you want to do this, because my son wants to be an actor and he's done a couple of things already, um, you have to be tough because, you know, no matter how far you get up there, people pick on you. And you have to be able to take the 
criticism. Thank you. We'll call you. You, you yeah. know, yeah. without g going to pieces, and and I worried about that. But they both wanted to do it, and when I, we, my husband and I was sitting out there watching her make her debut uh, last month, I was like pins and needles, and I thought everybody better like her, or else I'm going to beat them all up. <laughs> <laughs> Did they? Did they like her? <laughs> oh, she's wonderful. She is very, very talented. Did you find yourself as a parent, not not a showbiz parent, but just as a parent, um, wanting wanting to say to her, you have to do this, or, or you have to do that, or that's not right, and you should you should wear this? I wasn't a stage mother. Okay. In fact, I had nothing to do with the show. She put it all together herself. I had nothing to do with what she wore. I mean, when the lights came up, I was like everybody else in the audience. I didn't know what to expect. And she just blew me away. And she didn't come to you for advice or anything? Not yeah. one thing. I'm so upset with her. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> because really, she how was does it so make wonderful. Oh, I okay. Thought, she was wonderful that without your help. Without my help, you know. Oh. And I thought, well, all right, you ask me anything. But um, <laughs> she was terrific. And then uh, after she made her debut and everything went wonderful, a couple of things, she said, well, Mom, you know, I have some questions about when the house is full, when it may be not so full, and uh, things like that. But uh, she's doing her world of dressing rooms and hotel rooms and waiting rooms and rooms behind the scenes and I can't forget the endless rows of sleepless nights and eatless nights and nights without a nickel in my jeans but it's all in the game and the way you play it and you've got to play the game, you know. Cause I was born in a trunk at the Princess Theater in Pocatello, Idaho. I was looking over some, some old columns that, that I wrote a, few, a long time ago when, when you were here, you were doing Anything Goes over at the Clarence. Yes. The first African-American woman ever to play Reno Sweeney. That's and right. And you did it so well that they brought you into New York. That's right. To do it. But we, we were talking and, and um, we noted that you had been successful on Broadway. Yes. In, um, Hallelujah, Hallelujah Baby. Hallelujah Baby. You won a Tony Award right. for a role that was originally written for Lena. That's right. Right. You have been very successful on television. Emmy nomination for, for your um, performances, Kizzy in Roots. And won an Emmy and for, an as Emmy a hostess, well, Fantasy. For Fantasy, right. Okay, so you've, you've got the Emmy, you've got the Tony. Um, if they had nightclub awards around here, you'd probably pick up one. <laughs> you have, you succeeded everywhere except Hollywood. And back then, the last time we talked, you said that the reason was that every time a script came your way, it was, they want you to play a maid, they right. want you to play a cook. All right, so, so has Hollywood changed in, in the past nine, ten years in its attitude toward African-American women? Well, yes, it's come a long way. I mean, we have, you know, Whitney certainly uh, is, is, is starring. Uh, we have Angela Bassett, you know, who's starring. We have Hallie. Whoopi's one of the most popular. Ha Whoopi, we have or, Halle and, Berry. Right. I mean, so there are roles, but it's still hard to find roles for not only black women, but women after they get a certain age. Right. That's the problem. And for some reason, the Clint Eastwoods and those guys, when they have a, a girlfriend, they still live in that world that they think they're still 25, you know, <laughs> and they have these 25-year-old girls next to them. They look very silly, <laughs> you know? And, and women have come so far. I mean, what was middle age when my mother was, her mm -hmm. day, no longer exists. It's, it's become much later now. And so I just find that a lot of times Hollywood 
uh, has trouble with getting with the times. And I don't know, since mostly men run that whole thing, they, there must be something that they just don't want to admit to about women when they get a certain age. I, they want us to be motherly, and women are not. I mean, mothers look great. I'm a mother. You're a mother, uh, and and, you, you, and you know? you're a, a very attractive woman, <laughs> I might add. You know, so uh, it's still very, very hard to get that that happening. Do you st are you still looking for something like that to happen? Oh, yeah, I would like to do yeah. movies, absolutely, because I, I'm an actress, and uh, naturally, I. Uh, that's what I want to do. I, but I seem to be able to do more acting on television, mm -hmm. which reaches far more people. Right. So I'm not complaining. You know, uh, recently I had the pleasure of being part of a show that CBS didn't pick up, but it was a wonderful show called Under One Roof with James Earl Jones. And uh, I played the mother of the. But uh, you and actress. James Earl Jones, and they didn't pick that up? They didn't pick it up with. And Joe Maybe Morton. Maybe that's why Letterman's making all those jokes about Well, CBS. you know, I'm, you, you wonder. You really wonder because for some reason they think we as the television audience are not very bright and that we want to see just certain things. And then when one show becomes like, uh, you know, Seinfeld and Friends, now we have 12 versions of that. Right. I'm happy with the originals. They're wonderful. <laughs> I want to see the clones, you know. So there needs to be other things, but I think the networks, uh, they don't know what they want to do right now. What about what about series work? I mean, you did you did Roots, you did what, backstairs, uh, backstairs, backstairs at White the House. White House. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the series they they seem to have kind of developed into a machine where they just keep like kind of grinding the, them yeah, out. Yeah, they crank they crank Whereas things Whereas Roots, was, if I'm not mistaken, was the first miniseries. That's right. It started a whole new thing. Which, by the way, that wasn't planned. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, the head of ABC at the time looked at the sh the show and said, "Oh, this is terrible." So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's get rid of this real quick. We'll put it on every night. <laughs> and then took the bows. Of, of course. When it started a whole new thing. It was the most watched show. And, uh, I, you know, every time I saw him taking bows, I said, oh, you're not telling the truth, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, that was another thing where they didn't realize what they had. Leslie, you ever, do you ever get so frustrated at, at the way television and the business are, that you just want to gather up all these big network ex executives and, and, and put them in a room and, and smack them around and, and, and kind of lecture them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, I just feel that we need to have different kinds of shows. And what's happening is we wind up with this, the same formula shows. And even in the movies, we seem to, f you know, the same kind of formula thing where everything has to be sex, sex, sex. We got to get a sex scene in, yeah. no matter what, whether it has anything to do with the plot or not, you know? And uh, it's, it's very frustrating. Mm. So we're, we're not going to see you doing any of these steamy sex scenes on, on television or if the, uh, the right part comes along. Well, <laughs> listen, <say>. you <laughs> remember in Roots, um, when uh, with Chuck, I had that, that rape scene, yeah. and then I had also the scene with Richard Roundtree, and let me tell you, that was an experience, because for some reason, whenever you're getting ready to do one of those semi-nude, mm -hmm. the, the set, all of a sudden, people that you never saw before <laughs> arrive <laughs> on the set. I'm going, wait a minute. I mean, it's bad enough we got all the, the cameramen and everybody else around, but who is that? I, one person, I looked up, I swear to God, I'm not lying. I looked up and there was an Indian woman, I'm talking about an American Indian woman, standing there and I went, now wait a minute, <laughs> this is going too far, don't you think? <laughs> Aren't you on the wrong sound stage? Maybe you belong yeah, right. a couple lots over. Yes, you know. But, um, and this was in 1976 or 75, right. yeah. so um, we're talking about uh, a, a long time ago when things were not as as, as, as loose as they yes, are as open today. Now, you, know, you know, but now we see uh, yeah, everybody's yeah. rear end. Yeah, and that's just in in, in daytime. Yes, forget about what goes that's on right, at night. That's right, at nighttime, right? <laughs> um, any stage work in the in the uh, in the future? As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing Call Me Madam. Really? And I'm going to be doing that at the. Uh, Paper Mill Playhouse. Here in New Jersey, the Here State New Theater Jersey, of New Jersey. And I'm very excited about it. And ironically, the first musical I did was at Berkeley when they were doing a whole series of shows with people who were on television. And following me in was Pearl Bailey, who was doing Call Me Madam. So I used to sneak yeah. in j just to be around her and watch her rehearsal. And here I am finally going to do this the same show that, that she did. And of course, Ethel Merman, she's the one that created it. But what happened was recently, uh, Tyne Daly, they did a concert mm -hmm. version. 
and it was very, very successful. And they've tightened the book and the music. I mean, it's, you know, you don't need analyzing. So, I mean, songs like that, I hear singing, but there's no one there. All that good stuff. So I, I'm looking forward to it. When's that? We start in April. We open in April. I start rehearsal in March. Tremendous. So, so you, you're not at a loss for work. When you've I got the clubs, you've got, you've got TV, David, you've got the stage. My son's a sophomore in college. I gotta you keep gotta going. Work. Yes. You gotta and then I have the new CD you know, which is called Painted Memories, that was written by Irvin Drake. He wrote all the music, mm -hmm. and Irvin did my second Broadway show with Richard Kiley called uh, Her First right. Roman, which was based on Antony and Cleopatra, which we had never recorded. We wound up recording it two years ago, and that brought Irvin and I back together, and we said to him, listen, Let's do an album together. So he wrote nine new songs, plus his famous It Was a Very Good Year and Good Morning Heartache, I believe, is also in it. Mm. And uh, we had the best time. It was like a family thing. We recorded it live. Which we, is, which is rare, so rare. Anymore. Which is right, rare. Yeah. And it was just a great experience. I'm so proud of this CD. So you're not at a loss for work? No. Tremendous. Thank God. Yeah. Leslie, continued success. Thanks so much for spending it's a few minutes with us. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Welcome back to Atlanta City. Thank you. We'll see you again. Good. Good.